Good morning, everyone. I'm Matt Peachy of Oxford City Council. Welcome to B4's Business Brunch. Um, the aim of this morning is for us to discuss the Oxford Living Wage Scheme, which is closely linked to the, to the Living Wage Foundation Scheme, which was launched over 25 years ago. And for over 10 years now, Oxford City Council has been promoting the Oxford Living Wage, which we feel is a, is a rate which uh, ensures that workers in Oxford get paid in a way which ensures they can afford the minimum that they require locally in terms of cost of living. And today what we want to do is just say a little bit about the scheme. Um, we've got um, four employers here with us who, who are Oxford Living Wage employers. One of them is ourselves, represented by Councillor Susan Brown, leader of Oxford City Council, um, who are obviously the, the, the original Oxford Living Wage employer. We also have um, Emily Scraysbrook from Ho Hoyles of Oxford, uh, one of our newest Oxford Living Wage employers. Jake Backus, um, founder of Big C Ventures, who you'll be aware of from the Common Ground Cafe, and one of our one of our living wage employers as well. Um, and of course, B4 themselves. It's really important that we've got you know local business networks invested in the Oxford Living Wage because we feel that will spread the benefits further. So we'll hear from Richard as well, who. Um, also as a living wage um, um, employer and, and their experience. What we'll aim to do is just say something about the scheme, first of all, and how simple that is for employers, something about the benefits of that scheme, and then hear from each, each of the employers here about their experience. I'd also like to introduce Carmel Conway, who is our lead in terms of promoting and managing the Oxford Living Wage Scheme. Um, and keen that we sign up lots and lots of new Oxford Living Wage employers in years to come. We, um, we, want, we want many more uh, employers doing the same thing. So something about the scheme briefly. Um, the Oxford Living Wage Scheme is voluntary. It should be, first of all, you know, said that it's voluntary. We recognise that uh, employers and businesses are in very different situations, particularly in the moment, in, in the moment we have with this pandemic. And uh, it's a scheme which allows employers to pay £10.31 an hour as of April, as of the new rates um, just announced, to both employers and contractors. So entirely voluntary, but it's a minimum rate of payment based on the minimum income standard. And we um, essentially fix that at 95% of the London rate, which is announced by the Living Wage Foundation each year. It's a very, very simple scheme here in Oxford. We essentially allow employers to self-certify. They tell us that they're in, in writing that they're paying their employees and their contractors or committing to pay their uh, contractors in future that minimum rate. Um, the minimum rate doesn't have to be included for uh, interns, for apprenticeships, for traineeships, although we always encourage employers to try and pay them that rate, that minimum rate as well. And essentially, we ask employers to renew that each year. The benefits of being a living wage employer have, have been evidenced significantly. Um, First of all, 93% of businesses have flagged that there are benefits to being a, an, a living wage employer, and that's figures from the Living Wage Foundation. 40% um, turnover is reduction for BrewDog, who recently signed up to being Oxford Living Wage. And IKEA, another employer who became, became a living wage employer, have, have basically flagged this as a key long-term investment in their staff. And in doing so, those staff have better conditions, better pay, and that translates itself into better experience for customers. And we see that right across the board. So staff retention, staff productivity, better management relationships. Um, and of course, it's better for, for employers. And, and the more employers we have paying the living wage, this is the you know, Oxford City Council view, the better our long-term recovery from the, the recession that's been impacted by the pandemic. So that's something about the scheme. Um, Carmel, I don't know whether there's anything we want to add on the scheme before we, we move on to, to talk to our various employers. Um, just to say it's all part of uh, to build back better. Um, and you've covered everything, Max. So perfect. OK, OK. And Susan, would you first of all like to say something about Oxford, o Oxford City Council's role? You, you've obviously got some knowledge on this that goes, goes a while back. So it'd be good to, to have any, any more details there. Yes, certainly. Thanks, Matt. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's fundamentally really important to our principles that we want to make sure that people in Oxford are able to take a full part in their local community um, and that they're able to feel that their work is valued. Um, and I think those are really important aspects of the Oxford living wage. So we know that people, uh, the, the rate is set at a level that people can 
do a little more than just fundamentally survive um, uh, and they can look after their families uh, and pay their bills. Um, and that, that is important. It also means that people have more money to invest back into the local economy. So um, the circular benefits for our local economy are good. Um, we felt of, obviously that it was important that we as the Oxford City Council were an Oxford Living Wage employer. Um, and we've been doing that for some time now. We've made sure that all contractors that we work with directly um, are also Oxford Living Wage, uh, or if they're not from, from around here, um, living wage uh, employers. And um, increasingly, we're using our procurement strategy to try and make sure that um, we're, we're making sure that we build in those social benefits uh, through our procurement work, um, which, again, I think is, is beneficial to our local economy. We're trying to make sure that we do invest in local businesses, um, that we are procuring wherever we can through local business, um, small and medium uh, sized enterprises, as well as, as larger companies um, and we but we want to be able to support the best who are looking after their employees so um, we, we've certainly seen the benefit in in within the city council um, I think it's it's been a good part of our extremely good relationships with our workforce um, uh, and I think that that's important for any employer um, and as Matt has said uh, certainly employers who pay the living wage whether it's the Oxford living wage or the national living wage um, have found that it does seem to benefit employers in terms of retention of, of workforce and, and indeed recruitment. So I think that's probably all I want to say at this point uh, about the City Council's role in, in this, other than to say that we're here to support um, businesses um, and through the work of Matt and Carmel and, uh, and others. Um, and we're very keen to celebrate any uh, any business that's, that is um, paying the Oxford living wage. And we, we make sure that we, we list you and, uh, and 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 celebrate what you're doing. Um, but it'd be really interesting to hear from some of you. So um, I might just start by turning to Emily, I think, and asking Emily if, as a, a relatively new Oxford Living Wage employer, um, how it came about that you decided to do this and, and what the journey was like. Uh, yeah, hi. So, um, so we're a, a games, puzzles, jigsaws, playing cards retailer on the high street. Um, so everything that we do is about fun and bringing people together and being a lovely experience, right? So it makes sense for us that we keep our employees as happy as possible so that when they're then, you know, advising on what games to buy to the customers, um, that they're doing it in a in a way that is happy and they're contented and at home things are good. And anything that we can do essentially to make our employees happier makes sense for us to do because it's going to have an impact then on the customer experience, I think. Um, so we came into it actually mainly through the Kickstart scheme. So we now have two employees through the Kickstart scheme who've been brilliant. Um, but I've been really keen from the start to boost the minimum wage that obviously they're obliged to be paid to the living wage so that that experience that they have with us is that much better. Um, and then bake it into the process for any other employees that we have going forward, whether that's Saturday staff, whether that's, you know, full time manager, whatever it is. Uh, I mean, all of the reasons have been mentioned pretty much now already, but, you know, it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do as part of a community for us. Um, to give back to that community in some way. It's the right thing to do commercially because no doubt it will improve retention rates. You know, we want our staff to stay with us as long as we can keep them. Um, so anything that we can do to improve that, so much the better. And there's obviously all sorts of other things that we can do as well to, to make that more likely. But, you know, this is a very obvious one for us. So it makes sense to do. Uh, thanks, Emily. Uh, were there any particular challenges for you in becoming an Oxford Living Wage employer? No, not at all. It was really simple. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, almost to the point that I thought that I'd missed something. Uh, but no. So, I mean, obviously, just pay them whatever it is that you want to pay them. So I think it's 1031 now, mm -hmm. I want to say. Um, and then uh, and the process of becoming accredited was super simple. It was a while ago now, but I have a feeling it took me about five minutes 10 minutes, really quick process, really quick process to then be confirmed and be provided with all the collateral. Um, and actually that's been really lovely to have. So I think, you know, <laughs> within about 10 minutes of having that collateral received, it was straight into all of the email signatures. Because um, as far as I'm concerned as well, it's not just about, you know, it's right to do without any accreditation, but it's also important that once you have 
the ability to get that accreditation, you use it both to encourage other employees, sorry, employers to do similarly. Um, so obviously within the Oxford community, there are lots of business groups um, that we're part of. And it's really lovely to be able to encourage both explicitly and subtly through an email signature and other similar things, other employers to do the same. But also for me, I think it shows prospective and current customers that we're an ethical business uh, mm -hmm. with good practice. And I think as a customer myself for any other businesses you know all else being equal if one business is paying the living wage and is doing right by, by their employees I'm far more likely to want to shop with them so it also has that benefit right it shows our customers what our values are um but yes very easy process thanks Emily and I'm, I'm I'm interested to know how far away you were from from being an Oxford living wage employer at the start because I know retail in particular have really often found it quite challenging because there is quite a big gap in, for some retailers um we actually weren't far off and that's mainly I think we were I think we had said for ages without looking too much into it which is totally my fault we had just said 10 pounds seems like a reasonable amount to pay a retail employee um and then knowing that the living wage was only slightly more it's like well you know it's a no-brainer of course we want to do this if it is that much more you know that's on us for not realizing but as soon as you know if you can make the change then so be it and actually I think that also is partly due to the fact that growing up a lot of the jobs that I had were in retail and it really did make a difference when you felt like you were being paid minimum wage and taken advantage of and you weren't going to do anything about it because you were young there was that feeling of kind of discontent and it's such a shame when actually it's not a huge difference to go from minimum wage to living wage so why would you not want to do that to make your employees happier about working for you and feeling also that sense of pride I think there's also something to be said for the fact that your employees are your brand ambassadors right so whatever you can do to keep to make them happy and want to tell people about you so much the better thanks very much Emily um that's really good to hear from you um Jake may I turn to you and do you want to say a little bit about your business and how you made the journey so Common Ground Cafe and Workspace is a uh, cafe and workspace in Little Clarendon Street. So we're a social enterprise. Um, so we're not profit maximizing, but we do try to make a profit to stay financially sustainable, of course. Um, we're uh, quite a big space. We're in an old Barclays Bank. So we allow people to stay, you know, all day on their laptop. We're not going to kick them out at lunchtime. Um, and it's just, you know, come and be there, come and relax, chill out. Um, and we support student mental health as our social purpose. Um, and our vibe is just to be, you know, a really relaxed space where we have a relatively lower rate of turnover than other cafes. So we've got more time to make people feel welcome. Uh, and, and we morphed into a social space, really, where people come and have their clubs and their meetings uh, and stuff like that. So that's our background. I My other job, my main job is uh, environmental sustainability. So I also work in B Corp applications. So I am all, always looking for new models of better business and, and um, you know, how we can, uh, you know, have a sustainable business model in, in general. And so the reason why we actually reversed into this, um, uh, if I'm honest, uh, 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 slightly by mistake, uh, but uh, because ultimately during COVID, um, well, we used to have a lot of people. In some respects, we had too many staff working at a time, uh, which was really quite expensive. We were two or three people at a time. It's quite quite a lot. But when we uh, during uh, when our sort of sales crashed during you know not not during lockdown but during sort of COVID was around, we only had one person working at, at a time most of the time. And I thought, well, it's actually fair to pay them more for doing that. Uh, and this is a good time to go to the Oxford living living wage, which actually is about a 21 percent pay increase uh, for you know, in cafe terms. And so the real reason. So the reason for doing it is about four or five different reasons. And so we're going to stick with it. The first one is a moral one, because if we are, you know, if we want to be a better business, if we want to show better business models, we morally need to do that. And um, ultimately, the, one of the toughest things to do during this whole lockdown and COVID process is to look after our staff uh, and to make sure because furlough pay hasn't really covered. Some of the people haven't done well because it takes an average pay. And if their first few months, they only did a few hours uh, work and their the final months before lockdown, they were doing a lot of hours. It took their average. And so they, they're really in tough, tough situation. So ultimately, so we, we did it for a moral reason. We did it uh, actually to support our employees, uh, as we've already talked about. The other one is another. Clearly, we can show this whole concept that Emily is talking about, about trust. 
uh, with our customers um, that so we are living the values. It's a proof point of that trust and, and congruency. But also there's a there's a, a personal benefit because with no executive pay around here, so the directors get paid the same as the lowest paid person. So now I get paid more. Pete gets paid more. So uh, we we uh, so we, yeah, we haven't done too you know we, we don't uh, do, do too many hours but i see that, that to be honest that's only a side benefit so those are the main main things that I did. one of the other benefits is turned out we wanted to have one of our staff we wanted to make to be the manager to take over more responsibilities the fact that we are now paying uh oxford living wage uh, and his other place of employment wasn't means you know he's going to be moving over to us full time uh, which is which is fantastic. So I do think it's a uh, you know it's a better business model. It's you know it's the concept of being a B Corp, and ultimately we need to you know live in the community. We need to uh, uh, you know be you know be responsible businesses and to have that leadership approach. So uh, it's no longer enough that companies can exist you know at the cost of society and the cost of the environment, and that we actually need to have responsible businesses to to build you know really amazing cities like Oxford you know, as a thriving space, really. So I'm, I'm interested to hear, Jake, that you, you actually made this move during lockdown, effectively, during this during the pandemic. During our toughest time. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, that's uh, that, that that is interesting to hear, because I think a lot of people are, are perhaps thinking this is not the right time to do it. But but you're saying, actually, you think for all the reasons that uh, you've just given that this, this could be the right time for what well, certainly was for your business. Well, there's no time, no better time like now, if not now, when, so to speak, you can always find an excuse to put it off. Tra trading is always going to be difficult. Uh, so actually, I think this is the best time to do it because actually this has been such a hard time for employees, especially the lowest paid employees, that actually this is the time when they need the help and support, you know, not not when, you know, things. Are, but this is now the time. So uh, so in terms of employees, they, they we've got to do it now. And morally, we need to do it now. You know, uh, it's good. Customers are looking for businesses to be more responsible now. So it's all about now. It, there's, there's absolutely no reason to wait at all. Well, thank you very much, Jake. That was extremely eloquent. Uh, Richard, perhaps you'd like to give us a bit of an overview. Well, Jake, for Prime Minister, I think. I'm <laughs> <like> that. <laughs> I mean, it's, um, it's difficult to add too much after what uh, you're, you said yourself, Susan, and what Emily said. And Jake, you've all been... Um, making some really um, valid points. And it's great to hear from you personally, Susan, about how you're setting the standard. Um, as I think a criticism historically of local government has been uh, sourcing um, suppliers outside of the area. But I think if you can um, be seen to proactively engage with local businesses that are adopting um, Oxford Living Wage, I think that sets a great example and hopefully can encourage more uh, to adopt it. Um, and as you know, when, when Matt and Carmel approached me, it must have been over a year ago. I mean, for us, like Emily, it was a fairly easy process. We were already we already qualified. But I think as our position is, is sort of, um, central to a, a lot of businesses in Oxfordshire as part of B4, um, it was a no brainer for us to, to sign up and to set an example. And I've made a note because we, we should also be um, putting the OLW uh, logo on our faces like Emily has. Um, so we will make sure that, that gets done um, and really show off that we're a, an OLW uh, employer. Thank, thanks, Richard. Um, I mean, are there particular businesses that you think are struggling to 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 meet the the, the demands of being an Oxford Living Wage employer? Oh, without doubt. You know, um, and we hear about um, the the challenges that businesses across many sectors. Um, are facing, but it's great that Emily and Jake from two sectors that have really um, uh, found it incredibly challenging, much more than others, have, have adopted this um, now um, at a time when it would be easy, as Jake said, to to put it off. But I think it sets a great example for others in, in the retail and hospitality sectors to follow suit. And, and as Jake um, mentioned, and, and Emily and, and yourself, you now is the time when businesses really need to to show themselves to be better businesses. We, we do a lot of work with Grant Hayward, who, John, who Jake will know, um, who also um, uh, promotes B Corp. And as part of our sort of three strands, we, we push businesses profile, we help them connect with each other, and then meaning is the third sort of plank of, of B4, where we're helping businesses using examples such as Blenheim, such as yourselves with OLW, 
um, to follow suit and understand the benefits of becoming a better business. And it's not um, acceptable now, really, just to exist in business just for your own gain and to attract employees and to attract customers. Um, as Emily said, you know, she will, uh, she will go out of her way to now work with customers, uh, with suppliers that are adopting OLW, um, as you are, and as I'm sure Jake is. Um, it's, it's vitally important that we, we um, give a huge amount of attention to things like this and, and other things that, um, that we can be doing to become better businesses and better examples for others to follow. Thanks very much, Richard. Um, I'm not sure that there's a great deal that I can add to that. I think we've, uh, we've heard some, some really good um, uh, stories today from different businesses and how they've become Oxford Living Wage Employers. Um, uh, and I, I think a little more as well about the benefits of being an Oxford Living Wage Employer. So, um, Matt, I'm going to hand back to you to yeah. sum up. So thanks everybody for, for joining the business brunch today. Really, really excellent contributions from all. And I, and I would just finish by saying, you know, we, we have a whole range of employers, both in terms of size. You've got the University of Oxford as one of the, you know, the largest employers in the city and the county um, as an Oxford living wage employer to the smallest um, with those just with a couple of employ employees that are doing this scheme. We've got organizations in education, in training, in technology, in retail, in hospitality, in workspace, a whole range of sectors as well that are taking part in this scheme. And I would just in encourage any employer, how many, no matter how many employees they have and what sector they're in, just to have a look at the scheme and have a look at how simple it is and then consider whether it's something that you can do, bearing in mind it is voluntary and what the benefits may be, looking at the positive costs, looking at the, looking at the benefits as well as the cost of this, because that, mm -hmm. that is very important. There are those benefits to the empl the employees and they're important, but there are benefits to the employers. And I think that that's the thing to really bear in mind with this. So just, just finally, anyone who's watching, I'd encourage you to have a look at our website, oxford.gov.uk forward slash living wage. Um, the details are there and it's very, very easy to sign up and we'd like more, more of our local businesses to do so. So finally, I'll just say thanks to, to Richard, Emily, Jake, Susan and Carmel for participating today and, and, and wish you all a good day. Mm -hmm.